but you still have an appetite. And you must keep that. And they spoke very gently. And I thought, my Lord, on top of everything else, this man's a political leader. And he's going to be a great political leader. You know, after that fight, he did so much. And as I saw his decline, I realized that he'd simply handed the baton over. For those of us that were inspired, who understood that you need to stand up sometimes for something than the greater good of yourself, for the common good of your people. Because only when you have a cultural confidence can you then become multicultural. Can you then confidently sit at that table and hold your own, and as a result of what you've achieved, be respected for what you've achieved. Because we won't like everybody. Not everyone will be on your guest list. But we need to understand one another to make sense of one another. So as generations move on, as you ask why you're here, and what it means, something counts. Making something what it needs to be. He, uh... In what it needs to be, will always be those who hand the back, that make something of what they are and what they become. Jack Johnson was vilified. He was hated. 30 rounds of boxing without class, the searing heat. Alfie Gibson, Wimbledon champion, died in poverty. Thomas Smith, John Carlos, remember the man who was second. How did he feel? It is always a multicultural experience. After Ash, Michael Jordan I met in 85, when he was found in for Africa. And don't knock Tyson, he saved lives in Moss Side just by asking them to keep the peace. He saved lives. Hero, not role model. But what about the future generations? Are they making their contribution? What is the value? What is the worth? Because now there are many who see no colour. They are colourless. They're not colour blind. They're not colour ignorant. They don't see the colour. In many respects, Martin Luther's dream has been realised. Muhammad Ali's wish that he not seek to make war with people that he had no beef with has been realised. There is still conflict, but it's another form of conflict. But when you become the great humanitarian, what will it ultimately mean? What will it ultimately lead to? If you have asked Muhammad Ali that it would be a, his daughter that would continue expressing what he expressed in the ring, and then learning that the name is the most valuable thing that you can have, no matter what wealth I have asked and lost, no matter what medals I won or lost, or titles that I held, my father's name is the most valuable thing I could have ever had. It will be the most valuable thing I will hand over to my sons and my daughter. My son wishes to win Wimbledon, but he has hay fever. I mean, how are you going to do that? How are you going to do it? He will do it, by the way, once he worked out the hay fever thing. But in the inspiration of what you look for, when I look at the games of South Africa, she went to the townships and she was struck by the energy. As her father was struck in 74, she was struck with that sense of responsibility. But it's a responsibility for all of you. It will be the motivation for all of you. It will be the reason that you do what you do and become what you become. And this is our philosophy. This is why I do what I do now. This is why I deny myself quality time with my children to be with you, my fellow peers. I'm now a former ex-world champion depending on what company I keep. But you are the future generations of winners. But never abdicate your responsibility. And when you walk in this great sporting cathedral, it is a symbol that resonates and radiates beyond Louisville, Kentucky, America, but it's all four corners of this world and on all five continents. You must remember that the regeneration of responsibility and at the time where I believe at any more important time is your time to make that commitment, whatever that means. So whether sport is a lot of shivering a code of ethics and it's there to recruit people from all classes of peoples. Sport is a truce. In the era of antagonisms and conflicts, it is the respite of the guides. Whatever belief you have. I never saw anyone from one side of the belief who wouldn't come to that common belief of wanting to win for the greater good. But the competition does end in respect and friendship. Sport is education, the truest form of education, because it is character. Sport is culture, the truest form of culture, because it does so for those who least have the opportunity to feast on it. 
I know where I'm going, and I know the truth, and I don't have to be what you want me to be. I'm free to be what I want. He did that shot because he knew he'd get a front page of Life magazine. Opportunist, marketeer, poet, warrior, gladiator, rights activist, a man of conviction. A lot was inspired. There is so much to do. And if you all play your part, then I don't have to do so many earmarks. Whenever you think about your winning, you think about your dreams, remember they are the dreams that you, God willing, will realize, but you will inspire so many others. Not only your family, not only your friends, not only those in your respective universities or places of learning, but that higher learning, that value that takes you beyond what you believe you can be. Because if you have that as your motivation, you will achieve everything. Anyone here said when we were kings? Many of you have seen it. Show hands, this is the only active participation you will make. No one's seen it. Please get a copy of it. And you will understand why I'm here today. Without it, I'm still angry I lost my father. But you know, I'm so happy that I lost my father. So if I hadn't lost my father, I wouldn't have had heroes like Kali. I wouldn't have had heroes like Mr. Kobayashi. I wouldn't have had heroes like Gordon Richards. I wouldn't have held hands with Mandela. I wouldn't have been honored by Her Majesty the Queen. I wouldn't have exchanged pleasantries with Dying. Princess Diana, a great humanitarian. Mother Teresa played basketball. Martin Luther King played basketball. Gandhi did yoga. Malcolm X boxed. They all needed sport, helping them do what they needed to do to make things right. You can do it. And I'm reminded when Ali actually challenged, and when he was actually prevented from doing what he did best, he made the comment, to Harvard graduates. Dyslexic, I was dyslexic. It doesn't mean that words have to be expressed only in the written form. Me, we. You cannot do it on your own. Take the motivation of all things negative and turn them into a positive. It's about hearts and minds. This is something that still inspires me and it still tells me why it needs to be why it needs to be. And all I would say to you, in being the most patient, I always find athletes are more impatient than the young people I speak to. Remember when you could be a king or a queen, stand the rush to and achieve great things. In every heart, there is a twirl that's steady and strong. It does not know deep, deep, I'm feeling fine. In every soul, there is a memory, a standing tower, the proudest we could be. I cannot fall, for I recall we were born in majesty. Yeah.
My name's Nick Doros. I'm from the Georgetown College uh, football team. We just got done talking to um, Jeff Thompson about uh, his youth charter program and his, you know, uh, lecture on you know how sports have impacted youth throughout the world. Talk and, to um, okay, and it was uh, you know it was very interesting to know how you know we all play sports for various reasons and get different things from it, and just the way that that sports can impact kids and all you know from the time that they're little all the way up to the time you know that they're you know adults and in the way that, that that you know not only has an impact on the way that um, if, you know what they get out of the sport but you know how it can have a definite impact on their life and um, you know how you know he even cited examples of how that you know has, has saved lives on occasion and just uh, you know tied it all together with the whole Muhammad Ali and um, how he has gone on to inspire so many people and what they've done and how they've lived their lives, and um, you know, it was, it was a really good talk. So, uh, to be a great athlete, I guess you have to really focus on yourself, and yeah. And he kind of turned it inside out, didn't he? And how that's you, what he. How you make it bigger than yourself? Once that's you what you know. What he talked about, you know, you start out focusing by yourself, but you also have to surround yourself with great people, and you know, and um, how surrounding yourself with great people is, you know, uh, uh, you know, the way that you become a champion in, in your sport and in life and um, you know I think that really made a lot of sense of what he was saying about how you know the, the better the people are and, and the more that they work together to you know help you with with your sport and in life you know the, the better off you're going to be. So yeah you're, you play football, play football. Um, for whatever reason has this kind of changed your outlook on sports or what it might help you do in the future? I, yeah I think, it, I think it does a little bit you know um, um, you know you're going to be a, a teach high school um, you know, when I get out of school, and you know I think that you, you try to surround yourself and gain as much knowledge as you can. Um, and I think that this is a great, great uh, thing to hear something from somebody that comes from a little bit of a different background and how you know sport, not just football or basketball, but you know in this case karate, you know how that kind of uh, you know uh, wor works to uh, help help people and and how that. Um, um, you know, can uh, you know affect the lives of other people, and, and and how how you can you know take this take take what you've learned from the sport and apply it to your life and apply it to other people's lives and and really uh, um, you know make a difference in the world. Okay, great. Right. Spell it for me. Okay, uh, my name is Nick Noros. It's N I C K uh, D O O R O S, and I'm from Georgetown College and play football um, there. Okay. Uh, Tasha McBroom is T A S H A W N M C B R O O M. Okay. All right. Just um, tell me a little bit about uh, your experiences here. Maybe what you were expecting. What ended up happening? You know? I will. Basically, I mean, I came with an open mind, and uh, what I learned today was get something besides yourself. You know, try to help others because it's not about you at the end of the day. It's about what people learn from you, and that was one of the most the message I got from his speech, which went really well, I think. So, right. So, uh, being an athlete, it's it's mm -hmm. all been about you know building your body and being the best athlete you could be. But he kind of turned it around, didn't he? Like at, at the end of your career or whatever mm -hmm. success you might have, you can. Uh, turn that outward and help other people? Yes, I, I mean, I don't want championships in high school. I don't want 
a conference championship in college. So getting besides the championship, like he said, I mean, it's about what others take from what you have done. So if you can uh, help people out once you're finished with your career, then I think that's the uh, most important thing. So. Give any ideas about that? How you might use sports later in life? Um, I'm thinking. Well, I don't know if I'm getting into culture or anything, but I'm thinking about helping about helping the youth anyway. So that's something real positive. Because like you said, the present is the future. So if I can, once I get done with college, be able to help someone else move forward, then that'll be a good thing for me. <laughs> okay, Sue. All right. My name is Bruce, B-R-U-C-E, Owens, O-W-E-N-S, from Georgetown College. Okay. And you uh, coach the football program? I coach. I'm one of the assistant football coaches at okay. Georgetown College. Just want to give me your um, general impressions? Your yeah, I think it was very educational for our students. Um, we rely quite a bit on our seniors for leadership with our football team. We brought 20 seniors over here today to listen to Mr. Thompson. Uh, one of the messages I think that he told us was that, you know, uh, Sports is, is, is a vehicle to success. Uh, it's not going to make your life, but it also can teach you a lot of valuable lessons. It can allow us to teach others a lot of valuable lessons. I think the Ali Center here uh, and the inspiration that Muhammad Ali has given to not only boxers, athletes, but to the world uh, is, is a great message with Mr. Thompson here. Uh, it's, it's to persevere, it's to work hard, it's to overcome adversity, and then to give back. I think that's the big message, is to give back. If you give back, you're going to make this place a whole lot better. I'm just curious on what to say about that. Well, I, I think, or is it just something about the, the nature of sports in general? I, society? One, I think sports are competitive. Uh, and, and in order to, in, in our culture anyway, uh, you know, people look at winners. And if you're going to win, you have to compete, you have to train, you have to work hard. And then when you stop competing and when you go out in the real world, uh, whether it be into graduate school or into the corporate world, someone's going to try to hire someone who knows how to compete, how to win, how to set goals, how to strive towards something. Uh, and that's what athletics gives to our athletes. Uh, we're very, very proud of our kids at Georgetown. But I think they learn a lot of life lessons by going to a place like the Muhammad Ali Center, listen to an Olympian like Jeff Thompson, a world champion. Uh, and the message might be a little different, but the result is the same. Okay. All right. Great. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Were they from Georgetown as well? The girls?